Good morning, Solano Valley. Hope you guys had an amazing Christmas and in this weekend following Christmas have had a chance to stop and rest and focus on the reason for Christmas and the reason why we uh, celebrate the season after a crazy year. Um, and if you haven't had that time, I encourage you to find it, uh, find a quiet space just to get away and uh, remember why it is we do Christmas and why it is we sing and worship. This morning we're going to um, sing out a few weeks ago. I taught you guys a new song and I thought I would bring it back tonight. Uh, it just says so many reasons. There's too many reasons to count why we worship Jesus. And so this morning, let's sing this together. So many reasons, too many to count, to say that I love you, God, to worship you now. Your love is perfect, your heart is kind. I'm yours forever, forever your mind. Sing Jesus, Jesus, the anthem of my heart. Jesus, the anchor of my soul. I'm overwhelmed by all you are. No how I You call me beloved, and you call me friend. Your grace says I'm worthy, God, to welcome me in. Now all that I long for, and all that I to be in your presence forever fall out of your feet sing Jesus Jesus the anthem of my heart Jesus the anchor of my soul and I'm overwhelmed by all you are no how I Faithful to the end, faithful to the end, God, you are always good, but where do I begin? There's so many reasons to love you, your promise never breaks, your beauty never what else can I say? There's so many reasons to love you. Sing Jesus, Jesus, the anthem of my heart. Jesus, the anchor of my soul. Cause I'm overwhelmed by all you are. do how I Jesus, the anthem of my heart. Jesus, the anchor of my soul. Cause I'm overwhelmed by all you are. So how I love you. Sing, oh, how I love God. Oh, how I love you. Oh, how I love God. Oh, how I love you. Amen. We worship an amazing God. Uh, we, we get to worship an amazing God. And uh, every time I get to sing for and play the, the, this way, I just am so excited that we have technology uh, to get to come together, even in this weird season, even in this weird time, to worship 
our, 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 our king. Um, let's keep singing this morning. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. Christ alone cornerstone weak made strong in the Savior's love through the storm he is Lord Lord of all when darkness seems to hide his face I rest on His unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. My anchor, my anchor holds within the veil. Christ alone, oh Christ alone. Cornerstone, God, weak and made strong in the Savior's love. Through the storm, He is Lord, Lord of all. Sing, when He shall come, when He shall come with trumpet sound. Oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone. Faultless I stand before the throne, Christ alone, oh, Christ alone, God, cornerstone for oh, the weak and made strong. In the Savior's love, through the storm, He is Lord, Lord of all. We sing Christ alone, oh, Christ alone, God, cornerstone, for the weak made strong, in the Savior's love, through alone, God, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love. Through the storm, He is Lord, Lord of all. Good morning, Salama Valley Church. Um, we are so glad you are here this morning, and I want to welcome you to our last official service of 2020. Can you believe next week is going to be 2021? Um, but a special thank you for being here with us this morning. Um, needless to say, 2020 has been a crazy year, and I'd love to offer you a couple ways to help encourage you as we head into 2020. And so the first one is, uh, there's a couple of ways, um, and I want to introduce to you uh, two different uh, studies that are, or readings that you can do. So if you have littles in your family, um, I want to introduce you to a book that's called Friends with God's Story Bible. You know, one of the 
One of the most important resolutions we can do in, in the beginning of the year is always a time when we want to make all these new resolutions. And as we're heading in from 20 to 21, I think we all have our eyes on something. So I would like you to make a resolve with me to be in God's word every day in 2021. And so a couple of resources that we can do that, like the first one that I mentioned is that Friends with God's Bible Story. So Bible study. So if you have littles in your house, this is a great resource. It helps families connect on a regular basis and engage with God's words and have fun together. It has a year's worth of weekly Bible stories told from the points of view of Bible characters so that kids can see how God has always loved and always worked through everyday people just like them. And the second one is maybe if you're a little older like me, um, or you, you were looking for a way to read through the Bible in the year, it's the Daily Walk Bible, a great resource that offer, offers a simple daily reading plan and tools to help you not only read through the entire Bible, but also see how all of it fits together to become one cohesive story. So I encourage you, we encourage you, check those out, check those resources out, and discover how they can help you become more like Jesus in 2021. And lastly, um, in addition to being in God's word every day, we need connection. So we want you to know that in early 2021, some small groups will be relaunching. And nothing is better than community. I need you, and you need me, and we need each other. So whether you're brand new to following Jesus or you've been following him for years or you're exploring what it means to follow him, we believe that intentional relationships, that the intentional relationships you find in a small group are the ideal place to connect and to grow. So we want to help you find a place to truly belong and to celebrate the joys of life and to weather the storms together. That's why our groups exist. And we will keep you posted with important details like start dates and leader information as they become available. So stay tuned. We'll have more on that. And right now, I'll turn it over to Elsa. Thanks, Carolyn. So right now, we're going to continue our worship with our giving. Have you ever found that perfect gift that you just are so excited to give someone. That maybe it's a birthday gift or a Christmas present that you know your friend or loved one just had to have. Do you remember being so excited to give it to them? Just that joy you had, just because you knew how much joy they would have in receiving it. Well, God wants us to give to him with that same kind of joy and excitement. And that's because in that way, we fulfill 2 Corinthians 9, 7, where it tells us that God loves a cheerful giver. There are four ways that you can give to our church. The first one is by giving online at www.solanovalley.org forward slash giving. The second way is to tap give on the SVC phone app. And the third way is by sending a check to 1307 Oliver Road, Fairfield, California, 94534. And then the last way to give is to text G-I-V-E to 707-883-3019. Thank you again for giving cheerfully. And right now, I'd like to hand it back over to Jason to lead us in worship again. Awesome. Let's keep singing this morning. You give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. Give hope. You restore every heart. That is broken. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath. It's your breath. In our lungs. So we pour out our praise. Pour out our praise. It's your breath. In our lungs. So we pour. Great are you, Lord. 
sing, you give life. You give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. Give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath, with your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs, God. So we pour out our praise. You won't leave. It's your breath in our so we pour out our praise, pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs, God. So we pour out our praise to you only. Great are you, Lord, and all the earth. Because all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you, Lord, and all the earth. Cause all the earth, it'll shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you. With your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise, pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise to you only. It's your breath in our lungs, God. We pour out our praise, we pour. in our lungs so we pour out our praise to you only great are you lord singing great are you lord great are you lord Heavenly Father, this morning we thank you for the chance to come and sing. God, come and worship you, God, now as we get to hear from your word. God, that we can leave this time excited and changed um, for what you have for us this morning. God, as, as we end this year, um, end this year worshiping you. God, end this year learning about you. Father, we love you and we proudly sing your name. Amen. appreciate you uh, with the announcements and also Carolyn I uh, really appreciate you guys serving today so thank you very much and thank you out there for joining us today it's hard for me to believe this is the last Sunday of the year uh, it's the last Sunday of the year and for me um, yeah I love Christmas I love Christmas and it's just a great time I hope your Christmas was merry uh, uh, at the time that we're taping this, it's actually on a Wednesday night, so I'm still looking forward to celebrating Christmas. Uh, Caleb's going to be with us. We're looking forward with spending just time with Caleb and with Cass, with Faith, with Joy, and uh, just looking forward to that time together. But hopefully your Christmas was great. Hopefully my Christmas was great too. Uh, but, uh, but I always look forward to the beginning of a new year. I do. I look forward to just kind of uh, thinking through life and thinking about uh, maybe areas of growth in my own life, things that I want to work on, things in my spiritual life, uh, things in our family life. Um, you know, I, I like to, um, and also just kind of looking at my ministry, where and how I want to see growth in my life uh, in, in the coming year. So that to me is a, a really uh, a good time. I always look forward to that. When I was a kid, I kind of compartmentalized my life. And what I mean by that is... Um, 
Well, let me just talk about my vocabulary, okay? See, my vocabulary, uh, I had kind of like a Sunday morning vocabulary when I was at church. Uh, I had a home vocabulary when I was around my mom, my dad, my sister. And then I had a school vocabulary when I was with my buddies at school. And it kind of changed a little bit depending upon where I was at. Uh, so my life was kind of like uh, compartmentalized. Uh, I was a different person at church, a different person at home, and a different person at school. My life lacked integrity. And by that, what I mean is not just that I was a bad guy or something like that, but when you're constantly a different person with different people, uh, when your life is kind of, uh, when it lacks a sense of, of wholeness to it, uh, that you're bringing the same person that you are uh, wherever you are, um, then your life lacks integrity. And, and I remember when I was about 16, I recommitted my life to the Lord, and I started reading through my Bible, and it just changed. Um, I was just, it was like every day I would open my Bible, and I was amazed at something new that I was seeing in the Scriptures about God, about God's work in our lives and what He's done for us. And, and, and I just found myself, it was just like... Um, it was, it was, it's hard for me to explain. It was just like all of a sudden my, my heart came alive to the Word of God. And I remember I'd be learning things and I'd be like super excited. And one day I started using my school vocabulary to express my excitement to my mom. Uh, and I used a couple of colorful words I typically didn't use at church, typically didn't use at home. But part of what was happening in that moment is my life was becoming integrated. In, in words that I used to express excitement, they needed to change. They needed to change. And I remember my mom at the time, she looked at me kind of funny and kind of like she wasn't sure if she was supposed to be excited about what God was showing me in his word or she's supposed to be, if she's supposed to ground me because of some of the other words I was using. And, um, and, and, but sometimes in life and sometimes in our world, we have a tendency to com compartmentalize our lives. We have a tendency sometimes to be one person when we're at church, but if we're waiting in line at Rayleigh's, especially if it's a long line, especially if there's a person in the line that's making the wait longer, sometimes the way we feel towards that person, the way we might interact with that person might be a little different from the way we interact with people at, at church. Or we may be a different person uh, in our home or a different person at work than we are when we're with our friends from church. And what God wants is he wants us to live our lives uh, as, as with a sense of wholeness, with a sense of integrity, um, that, that we are the same person wherever we go, uh, uh, because we're the same person uh, in the presence of God, and we are in God's presence wherever we are. And one of the things that we want to do is we want to think with integrity and we want to live with integrity in terms of how we think about our faith, how we think about God's word, how we think about it means about being either a man of God or a woman of God, and how we think about, uh, about uh, financial wealth. And one of the things that's central to 1 Timothy chapter 6 is it talks a lot about money. It doesn't talk only about money. But it talks a lot, really beginning in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 3, all the way in to verse 19, several different times we see several different words speaking to us about how we should think about wealth. And so what I want to do tonight, or this morning, uh, is I want to read for us uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6. I'm going to begin in verse 11, which is kind of like in the middle of a thought. But I want to begin in verse 11, and I want to read it all the way through to verse 19. So I'm reading for you from 1 Timothy chapter 6, 11 through 19, from the NIV Bible. If you have your Bible close, I would really encourage you uh, to, to take your Bible, open up, read along with me. Keep your Bible with you, because throughout this, um, what I share with you, I'm going to be referring to the Scriptures again and again. And, and you'll want to have it close while uh, I'm reading it for you. But let's read together. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 11 through 19. Uh, the, the, the scripture says this. It says, But you, man of God, 
uh, you, man of God, flee from all this. Pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. In the sight of God who gives life to everything, and of Christ Jesus, who while testifying before Pontius Pilate made the good confession, I charge you to keep this command without, um, without spot or blame until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which God will bring about in his own time. God, the blessed and only ruler, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone is immortal and who lives in unapproachable light, whom no one has seen or can see, to him be honor and might forever. Amen. Command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant, nor to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Command them to do good, to be rich in good deeds, and to be generous and willing to share. In this way, you will lay up treasure. Uh, in this way, they will lay up treasure for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age, so that they may take hold uh, of the life that's truly life. This is God's word. Let me pray for us real quick. God, you are. You're great. You're awesome. You are the God of gods. You are the Lord of lords. You are immortal. You are invisible. You, you dwell in unapproachable light. Uh, God, uh, you, uh, Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for coming, uh, we th- which we celebrate in Christmas, and we praise you, <coughs> excuse me, and we thank you because you're coming again. Uh, Lord, tonight I pray that you would help me uh, to really, uh, that, that you would help me to really explain your word and apply your word to our lives in, in, in a way that, that people can readily understand. And God, I pray for all who are listening to this. I pray that God, God, that with your word, you will help us to humbly receive the word implanted that's able to save our souls. And I pray this in Christ's name and for your glory. Amen. All right. So what part of what we're seeing here, part of what we're seeing in the scriptures is this. We're seeing this, is that, where am I at? Yeah, okay. Uh, Part of what we're seeing here is that God wants you, God wants wants me to be a man of God. He does. Uh, He wants you men, he wants you to be a man of God. Ladies, he wants you to be a woman of God. He wants us to be men and women of God uh, who are, that we're fleeing from anything that's destructive in our lives, that we are pursuing things that are right and good, that we are fighting the good fight of the faith, that we are taking hold of eternal life. And I'm going to talk to you more about what all that means. And then what God wants us to do is he wants us to bless others with with, with our wealth. He wants us, God wants us to use our wealth that's been given to us by God to bless other people. So let's look at this in a little bit more, uh, a little bit more closer detail. And first of all, God wants you and God wants me to be a man or a woman of God. He wants me to be a man of God. He wants you to be a man or a woman of God. And I know some of you are already thinking, well, wait a second, I'm, I'm not a man of God. That, that's for people like Paul or Timothy or that, that's like for someone like, I don't know, maybe the Pope or for, you know, it's for uh, Billy Graham or someone like that. But you know, what, what Paul says here when he addresses Timothy, is he says this. He says, but you, man of God. That what Paul is doing in these words is he's calling Timothy to something different. The very fact that he's using the word but, which is a word of contrast, but you, man of God, means that he's wanting Timothy to be a very different kind of man. A different kind of man from who? A, a, a different kind of man in what way? But you, man of God, flee from these things. Flee from what things? And in part of what Paul has been doing throughout 1 Timothy is he's been talking to Timothy and he's been talking to the Ephesians about false teachers and false teaching. And part of what these false teachers 
thought, what they believed, what they taught, is they taught and they believed and they thought that godliness was a means to financial gain. We see that in, in verse, uh, verse 5 of 1 Timothy 6. That, that they thought that godliness was a means to financial gain. This was very similar to what we hear with some prosperity uh, gospel preachers today. Is that there are some people who believe that the reason that we're supposed to live godly lives is so that we can gain material wealth. And, and, and so what they were teaching and what they were believing and what they were living is very different from what the Bible is teaching and what God is wanting for you and for me. That, that in this text, in this text, uh, God has warned the Ephesian believers. He's warned that those who want to get rich fall into temptation. The people who really, really want to be rich. By the way, you can be very poor and want to be rich. It, 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 the scripture says, those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap. And in the many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people to ruin and destruction. You see, the desire to be rich can create great destruction and pain in our lives. The scripture says, for the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. And some people eager for it have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. The Lord Jesus once said that that you cannot serve God and money. You have to make a choice. You have to make a choice today. Is your life going to be ordered by uh, this desire and longing for material wealth, or is it going to be ordered by a longing and love for God? You have to make a choice. Everybody does. And, and, And what Paul was saying to Timothy, and what God is saying to you and me today is this. You, man of God, you, woman of God, flee from these things. So the man of God, the woman of God, needs to flee from things that are destructive in life. And it's not just a longing. It's not just um, an unhealthy desire for material wealth. Uh, The Bible tells us to also to, to flee sexual immorality, which wages war against the soul. Uh, the Bible also tells us to flee, uh, to flee idolatry. Uh, uh, you know, when I know sometimes people think, well, you know, we don't, I don't have a problem with idolatry. I don't worship an idol. It's not like I go out in my, I, I don't have a little Buddha in my backyard and I go out and bow down to it and say, you know, you know, praise you, little wooden figure. I mean, you know, but the truth is, is that an idol is anything that you give first place to in your life. So if you give first place to your career, there's nothing wrong with having a career, but if you give first place to your career, then you take a good thing, a career, and you make make it your ultimate thing. That is an idol. You can take a person, a good thing, someone you love and care for, and make them an ultimate thing in your life and make an idol out of a person. You can have a hobby. I mean, I love riding my bike. But you can have a hobby, and you can take a good thing, and you can make a good thing into an ultimate thing. And what God wants us to do is he wants us to flee from the love of money. He wants us to flee from sexual immorality. And he wants us to flee um, uh, from idolatry. But not only does God want us as a man of God or a woman of God to flee from these things, God also wants us to pursue all things that are right and good. What the Scripture says here, it says, pursue righteousness godliness, uh, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. That, that he wants us to, to, to pursue righteousness and godliness. And those two things kind of go together. It's, it's talking about a kind of piety in a way of living that is in alignment with, with God's righteousness. That he wants us to pursue uh, faith and love. Oftentimes, uh, that when Paul is writing in the New Testament, he'll, he'll talk about those two words together in, in kind of a, a, a couplet. He'll, he'll talk about faith and love. And in, uh, or sometimes he'll talk about faith, hope, and love. And then finally, this third little couplet here in this text is, is that, that God wants to pursue endurance and gentleness. And, and I like the way John Stott talks about this. 
Uh, first of all, I got to say this Greek word. Uh, sorry, nerd, Bible nerd. I'm a Bible nerd. But I have to talk about this because this is my wife's favorite Greek word, okay? Uh, her other favorite Greek word is ice cream, but this favorite Greek word is, is hupomone, hupomone, okay? And, uh, but he says uh, that we need to pursue hupomone or endurance, but we also need to pursue gentleness. And the way John Stott talks about this is he says that, that endurance is patience in difficult circumstances, and um, gentleness is patience with difficult people. Uh, both need patience. Uh, we need patience. And, and so what God wants us to do is he wants us to flee all those things that are destructive for the heart, the mind, the soul. And he wants us to flee those things that are good, that are healthy for us. Uh, third, uh, in being a man or one of God, God wants us to fight the good fight of the faith, okay? And I'm sorry, I'm going to nerd out with you again. I love this word. I love this word. Is when it says to fight the good fight, fight that word fight is agonizomai. Agonizomai. It can mean to fight. It can mean to strive. It can mean to, to labor. And there's probably a word that you hear in that word agonizomai because you've heard me talk about it before. But you hear the word agonize in that. And that's what it's talking about. It's like agonizing, labor, striving, fighting for something that is really, really good. We're not talking about having a fight with people around us. We're talking about fighting the good fight, not a bad fight. Fighting the good fight of the faith. And the faith is not just, this is not just personal faith in which we are saved. That's important. But when we're, he's using the word here, uh, uh, the faith with the definite article b before it, what Paul is talking about is he's talking about the faith, the body of belief, of doctrine, of the teaching of the Bible that we believe in. And, and, and this is going back to what Paul has been saying all along in 1 Timothy. Watch out for false teachers. Watch out for false teaching. Agonize. Fight the good fight of the faith. Make sure your faith is faithful and true to the Word of God. And so what God wants us to do as men and women of God, He wants us to flee those things that are destructive, to pursue those things that are good. He wants us to fight the good fight of the faith. And here in verse 12, take hold of the eternal life. Now that sounds kind of strange. Why does it say take hold of the eternal life as opposed to take hold of eternal life? And with that definite article there, that, that what, uh, what, what, God's Word is saying to us in this text, uh, and I'm sorry, I'm going to nerd out with you again, okay? Uh, another, another one of those words, it's epilambanomai. It means, to, it means to take hold of, but the way, what it means when it says take hold of is it means to, uh, in one verse, back in Acts, when Paul is arrested, the word used is... Um, um, is uh, is that word. It's, it's epilambanomai. It means to, to arrest, to apprehend, to seize, to lay hold of. And guys, if you're a football fan, this is what it means. Are you ready? This is what it means. It means when the ball comes out of the quarterback's hands and it's laying on the ground, you get on top of it as fast as you can. You seize it. You lay hold of it. You apprehend it. You arrest it. You take that ball. You pick it up. Uh, and, 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 you, and, and that's what God is wanting us to do, is he's wanting us to take hold of the eternal life and what you, what you need to see and understand about this eternal life. We're not talking about a life, eternal life, laying hold of it. We're not talking about laying hold of a life of an ending duration after you die. That's not what this is talking about. This is talking about laying hold of the eternal life because eternal life doesn't begin after we die. It begins the moment you or I become a child of God. It begins the moment we repent and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. It is not just a life of unending duration that begins after we die. It is a life 
that is eternal in its nature, character, and quality. It is eternal in its quality in this moment. This moment, this second, this millisecond at this time. And what God is wanting for us is he's wanting us to lay hold of this kind of life in this very moment. In the, in the next moment, in the next moment, in the next moment. And that's how I live as a man of God. That's how you live as a man or woman of God. You do it by fleeing those things that are destructive. By pursuing those things that are good by fighting the good fight of the faith, and by taking hold of the eternal life. So the question a person might ask is why? Why? What difference does it make? Why do I want to be a man of God? Why do I want to be a woman of God? Let me keep reading here. Verse 13. In the sight of God. In the sight of God who gives life to everything. Can you picture this, God? This God is great and awesome. He is the life giver. In the sight of God who gives life to everything, and of Christ Jesus, who while testifying before Pontius Pilate, made the good confession. I charge you to keep this command. What command? Well, it's everything that Paul has been saying to Timothy from the beginning of this letter to the end of the letter. For you and me today, it's everything that's written in the Word of God. I charge you to keep this command without spot or blame until the approaching of our Lord Jesus Christ. See, the reason that you want to be a man of God and that you want to be a woman of God is because Jesus is coming again. Jesus has come. He's come. We just celebrated it for Christmas. But this is what you need to understand is that Jesus is coming again. He's coming again in God's own time. He's coming again. By the way, let me tell you about his coming. His coming is lightning fast. It is. His coming is lightning fast, meaning this, that when it comes, it will come so quickly. You'll be like, oh my goodness, I I wasn't expecting it. He's coming again, and he's coming quickly. And he says, keep this command without spot or, or, or blame until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, verse 15, which God will bring about in his own time. God, the blessed and only ruler, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone is immortal uh, and who, uh, is, who lives in unapproachable light, with whom uh, no one is seen or can see, to him be honor and might forever. See, the reason, the reason and the way the godly man lives and the way the godly woman lives is they live with their eye they live with their eye on eternity they live with their eye on god and in in doing that they want to flee these things that are destructive pursue these things that are good fight the good fight of the faith and take hold of the eternal life there's a second thing i want you to see in this text and that's this is that that god wants you to use your wealth to bless others. In in verse 17, the Scripture says this, Command those who are rich in this present world. And I know some of you are saying, well, that's not me. You know, I'm not rich. All right? Uh, Command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant, not to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Command them to do good, to be rich in good deeds, to be generous and willing to share. Now, real quick, real quick. This is instruction for the rich. It's instruction for the rich. And I know a lot of us are probably thinking, that's not me. That's what you need to understand. That's what you need to understand. If you make 19,000, 19, one nine, not 90, $19,200 a year, guess what? You make more money a year than 90% of the world's population. Did you know that? And if you make your household income is $58,000 a year, $58,000 a year, guess what? 
you are in the top 1% of the richest people in the world. You remember a few years ago when there were all these people who were all upset about the one percenters, those who had one percent of the wealth? Well, I, that was the one percent of the wealth in America. But the truth is, is a lot of those people who were upset by the one percenters in America were one percenters in the world. It's always easier to be upset with other people than it is to be upset with ourselves. Now, I don't believe that being wealthy is anything to be upset about. I don't. The, the, I think God is a friend of wealthy people. I think he loves people who are poor. I think he loves people who are rich. I think he loves those of us in America today who consider ourselves a part of the middle class. I think he loves all of us. And, and what he, he tells us here is he says, command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant. None of us should be arrogant. I have nothing to be proud of. Everything I have comes from God, Okay. Everything I have comes from God. Everything you have comes from God. I should not think of myself as being superior to other people because I have more. I shouldn't think of myself as, as superior to other people uh, because, of, because of my education or anything. Everything I have comes from God. Nor should I think of myself as inferior to someone else just because I don't have as much as they do. God values people, period. And in Command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant, not to put their hope in wealth. The wealth will always let you down. It will. He says this, don't put your hope in wealth, which is so uncertain. There's no certainty in wealth. There's, there's, you brought nothing with you into this world, and you will take nothing out of this world with you either. That, that <clears throat> don't put your hope in and well, put your hope in God, the, the scripture says, verse 17, put their hope in God who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Did you know that God provided you? Everything he provided you was for you, uh, for your enjoyment. That God wants you to enjoy what he's given you. But let me explain to you a little bit about this enjoyment. We're not talking about the enjoyment that's self-indulgent. That's not what we're talking about here. He provided us everything for our enjoyment. Uh, and then, what, he, and, and then what, what the scripture says is this, is command them to do good, to be rich in good deeds, to be generous and willing to share. In other words, what God wants me to do is he wants me to enjoy being able to share of the abundance he's given me to bless another person. All right. So this is where I, I want to take a few minutes and I want to tell you guys that you, you are pretty fantastic. You really are. One of the things that you do well as a church is you are super generous. You really are. That, that you are a people I've seen this again and again. You are a people who generously give of what you have to bless other people. For those of us who've been here at Solana Valley for a while, a lot of us remember Renee Purcell. Renee, she was this wonderful, wonderful gal who came to our church. She had been, um, she had, she came out of a life of addiction. Uh, she had been homeless living out of her van with four kids t ages 10 and younger. Uh, and, and in this church, she came to know Jesus. And in this church, she got clean and sober. That was back when we were running something called Celebrate Recovery. And, and because of the friendship of many of you and the support of many of you, her life was changed dramatically for good. And those of you who knew Renee, you will remember the story well. For those of you who didn't know Renee, this is a story I need to tell. It's, it's one of those stories, stories that defines who we are and will continue to define who we're going to be. Because what you did, she had breast cancer not once but twice. And when she was in a time of great need, this is what you did. You guys went to your homes. This was amazing. You went to your homes. You went into your homes. 
your garages and your houses and you begin to collect things that you didn't use or that you didn't need or that you felt like you could do without. You went there, you collected all this stuff out of your homes and you brought it down to our building. And we ran a, uh, a parking lot sale for two days, two days. And you guys, out of the generosity of your hearts, you raised between eight and $9,000, if I remember correctly, that, that, that we were able to bless Renee and her kids with. You see, you are a people who I think really are. You've learned to use your wealth to bless others. And it's not just something you did way back then. It is something you still do. I mean, a lot of you just recently, and I know some of you, you may feel like, feel like this isn't a big deal, but what this you did is huge. This is huge. Is You'll go and you'll get these little shoe boxes. And, and you'll spend 25 bucks or something like that, and you'll fill it up with like little toys or like with toothbrushes and soap and, and things to, uh, to bless a little child in another part of the world. But you don't just pack that box. You don't just pack it with toys and soap and stuff like that. You pack those boxes with the love and the hope of Jesus Christ. And God is using those boxes to bless children. And many of those children are coming to know Jesus. Uh, there's one young man, he's from the Philippines. And uh, Cassidy, my youngest daughter, she packed his box a few years ago and sent it to him. And they became friends on Facebook. And today they're still friends, years and years later. Uh, but... You guys, I, I've seen this generosity in you. I've seen you, you know, J, Jeremy Wilson, who was an important part of our church, move back to be closer to their family up in Seattle. And, and, um, but they wanted to be a part of a church plan up there, and Jeremy became their worship leader. And on a Sunday, you guys gave an above and beyond your regular giving, and you gave like eight nine thousand dollars for us to help launch a, a new church up there in Gig Harbor just outside of of, of uh, Seattle and you've done that on many other occasions I can't even remember how many churches we've helped start that way but it's been a few it's been like I don't know like eight or nine I can't remember and and then you know even now the way that you give in your generosity even a time like 2020 when when times were tough you were still generous and and because of your generosity we are able to invest in the ministry of Jim and Annie Culp uh in, Jim and Annie Culp down in Mexico with Western Seminary and they are training about 400 400 pastors church leaders and church planners in about 90 churches in dozens of cities and, and towns throughout Mexico. And now not only in Mexico, but down in Peru, Cuba, Spain, and even now in the United States beginning this year because of your generosity. And I just feel like, um, you know, for me, I got to preach the text but I also feel like I need to say, well done. You guys are doing fantastic. And what I want you to do is continue to be and do fantastic things. It, it, what God wants for you and me is he doesn't want us to be like those false teachers or people who've been deceived by their teaching. Is he wants you and me, like Timothy, to be a man, a woman of God. He wants us to flee from those things that are destructive for our hearts, our lives. He wants to pursue those things that are good. He wants us to, he, he wants us to fight the good fight of the faith, to, to take hold of eternal life. He wants us to enjoy what he has richly blessed us with. And then he wants us to use that to bless others. Now let's pray. God, we are grateful, so grateful, uh, for how you've blessed us. Lord, this is a time of year of giving. This is a time when we celebrate giving. This is a time when we celebrate you and your gift, the gift of your Son. And Lord, what we want to do is we want to continue to learn. We want to learn how to be men and women of God 
And we want to learn how to use what you have richly blessed us with to be a blessing to others. And I pray this in Christ's name and for your glory. Amen. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, I worship His holy name. Sing like never before, and O oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass, whatever lies before me, let me be singing till the evening comes. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and oh my soul, I worship His holy name. Sing like never before, and oh my soul, while oh, worship Your holy name. You're rich in love, and you're slow to anger. Your name is great, and your heart is kind. For all your goodness, I will keep on singing. Ten thousand reasons for my heart to find. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, God, oh my soul, I worship His holy name. Sing like never before, and oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. And on that day when my strength is failing, the end draws near, my time has come. Still my soul will sing your great praise unending. Ten thousand years, then forevermore. Sing now, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, and oh my soul, while oh, worshiping Your holy name. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord. And oh, my soul, I worship His holy name. Sing like never before. And oh, my soul, I worship Your holy name. I worship God, I worship Your holy name. God, I will worship your holy name. Amen, amen. As we uh, end this morning, I just want to say have a great new year, and uh, we will see you next week, which is next year.